everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. We got a lot going on. It is a double flag day today because of the weather is just absolutely beautiful. Look how green that lawn is. I mean, I know there's not much grass to it. My weed garden over here is coming up absolutely fantastic. Look at those uh, milkweeds are over six and a half feet tall. It's, uh, it's just a fantastic day. Nice breeze. You can see that flag flying and uh, blowing in the wind. So I'm having a great time out here. But we got a few things to talk about today. Let's get downstairs and get started okay, right Okay, we're away. down the shop. We don't want to be down here too long, not on such a beautiful day. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about. You remember last week or the week before we did... Uh, trouble lights or drop lights or inspection lights, whatever you call them. And uh, it's so funny because a lot of people never heard that term before. And throughout the country and throughout the world, depending on where you are, depend, it all depends on what things are called, uh, what you might search for on eBay or things like that. And it's so funny because if you search on eBay for trouble light, you'll see a lot of the trouble lights, you know, the uh, the lights come up. If you hit drop light, you might see, you know, some of them come up, not not as many. But if you search inspection light, that's a UK term. Every every light that comes up is all uh, overseas in the UK. So it's funny like that. And I just was thinking that we have a lot of terms here just in the States alone that is so different from my area to the west coast to the middle of the... Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, our first example shows how half the country or three quarters of it calls it a semi or a semi truck, and we call it a tractor trailer where I am. Uh, sneakers is big where I live, but yet they're called tennis shoes in most of the country. Uh, soda, that's <laughs> the two coasts. But uh, you'd also call pop in the middle of the country. And then garbage can and trash can. You know, we call it a garbage can here in, in the city. Um, a drinking fountain or, or a water fountain. Uh, again, uh, you know, it depends where you're from. Uh, also, uh, fireflies and lightning bugs. So we call them lightning bugs here, but I, I, half the country is different. And uh, all here, garage sale, rummage sale, tag sale. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, I think my favorite of that one is uh, sneakers. Because <laughs> we always call them sneakers here. And, and I'm sure that, you know, much of the world and uh, a lot of the United States is going, you mean tennis shoes? You mean gym shoes? Yeah, what are you talking about? Sneakers. That's what we call them here. Anyway, uh, next up... Whenever it, it, the weather is like nice like this, this is the time of year with scouts that we I would always do emergency preparedness. And you have to be prepared. And uh, it's funny because last week when we were talking about tire plugs and patches, and uh, I have to tell you, and with the drop lights, the, the comments were fantastic. It's, I'm telling it's, you can learn so much from reading from the comments, from everybody that had different experiences and and what to do, what not to do is just uh, just fantastic. So thank you so much for adding your bits of information because if you read through those comments, you have a world of experience in there. Um, but somebody was saying about, uh, you know, uh, 805 Road King, our buddy, and Mike, uh, the small engine mechanic, they were coming back from a show and, uh, and somehow uh, ran over, I guess, some road debris that was there. And uh, and actually got a couple flats, and it's lucky that they had the kit, the same kit that I have that you you know you see, this kit here. Um, they had that kit, and they were able to get it up on the road. And also, they have a small compressor. I have a small compressor. It was one of the best things I ever bought. If and I keep that because I you know have a truck or whatever. And I thought I was going to go four wheeling, which I really don't do. But I always said if you had to add or uh, take some pressure out of the tires, it's a great thing to have. And these compressors are worth the money in there. They're not too expensive, but you gotta get a decent one. Don't get one of the real, real cheap ones because they, they take forever to fill up the tire. But if you get a decent one, it's well worth the money. And uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, safety as far as, you know, riding on the road. I had, all my scouts had to know how to change a tire. And uh, usually it was on one of my vehicles, I would bring them up there and they would all have to know how to use the, you know, the, the jack and how to use the, you know, the chock, the wheels and to break the lug nuts and to take the tire off and the troubles they can have. But the main thing they had to learn was safety, how to make sure you uh, are safe on the road if you're going to change a tire. 
And uh, that's what we're going to talk about now. Now, anytime you have a either flat tire or breakdown on the road, the most dangerous part of breaking down or pulling over is just that. You're an obstruction to the road. Many of these roads don't have shoulders. And by law, all commercial vehicles uh, have to have a DOT-approved safety warning devices that you could put behind the vehicle. They have to be visible in both daylight and at nighttime. And you set them off 50 feet, 50 feet, or, you know, up to 200 feet behind the vehicle, depending on the speed of the cars or whatever on the highway you're at, to give warning to motorists that you're disabled and that you're you're going to be either the car's going to be there. Now, there are all different types. These are the early ones. You might remember these. You see them at flea markets all the time. And what they were, they were kits that had reflectors in them. And I'll show you what they look like because they were all different types. And they came in a box that you could easily easily fit in the car. Today they've kind of been replaced by triangles, but let me show you how cool these are. These are always vintage. You see them at all garage sales and flea markets. Now some of these, they were all different, but these were really big in the 50s and things like that. And uh, I've always found them really interesting. Let me show you how, how they work. For example, this one here, and, and you can see it had a beautiful font on here as far as, this one's called the Straddle Light. I'm going to try and see if you can get, you see over here in the, in the corner it says Straddle Light. You can see it with the reflection, straddle light. That's pretty. And uh, how would you do this? You would open this up like this, bring this into the center section like that, and then push this down, and that would lock it in just like that. And now it would be more stable, and you could put that in the road like this, and you would set that out 200 feet, 150 feet, and 50 feet from your vehicle. Now, these, they all have uh, usually a little tab with two holes in it, and that's for the flag during the daytime you know it, it gives you a more visibility because you would put the little there's a little uh stick with a flag that goes in here and sticks out like that that's uh the inexpensive these are lightweight here this one here i don't know if you could see it it says a uh, miro flare you see that there and uh a Miro Flex, and you know, look how nice that is, right? How this would work is you would just pop this open, just it, uh, and it would open up automatically. Again, it had the uh, the little flag thing here, and you would put this on the road like that, and uh, again, it would give you a reflective. A warning signal if you are coming down and this is if you've ever been stuck this is you can't tell you how important these things are to have now these ones here this is the bigger box here um this one here is let's see you could say here it's made by a uh a stimsonite stimsonite can you see that on the let me see if I can get that. There you go. Stimsonite. You could see that. Well, how this works, it's a little bit unusual if you've never used one before because it looks a little, you say, how would this work? You squeeze these together, these uh, little wire thing, and you put them in opposite the way they are like this. So you squeeze them in, put them opposite, and then it stands up like this. And it gives you a higher, you could see here, it gives you a higher, uh, uh, stance for that uh, reflector that you could see it further off and again it's got the uh the two little uh poles here for the flags now the one thing about this here as you can see you got to remember sometimes it's a windy environment this one here is not quite as stable as some of the other ones you know but uh again you know truckers had to have them and they would buy them and here are the flags that you would see that would come with them and they had in the bottom, they had the little poles and you would thread the poles through the flag and put the flags there. So uh, this was important and every truck had to have them. Uh, but then they came out with night now, ones. Now later on, if you were doing a lot of night driving, you would want something that had illumination to it because the reflectors, although they're good, if you didn't hit them just the right way or, you know, they were, nothing beats having something that throws off its own light. So they came out with these type and they remember we, we did this on the channel. This is a, uh, uh, almost like a smudge pot. It was a, a regular torch, but, uh, the problem with these is you had to make sure that they always had kerosene in them. And, uh, you know, they would evaporate, the kerosene evaporates, and sometimes when you needed it, you didn't have the fuel. So these didn't last really a long time, but uh, they would come in three packs because you had to have three. Uh, they moved on to the electrical, you know, and uh, this one here I just <clears throat> recently obtained. I always wanted one of these. Look how cool this is, huh? This thing looks like 
just something out of the 30s or something and uh, how it, it had a battery here you would use these can batteries and you would put it in there and then uh, what you would do is you would again the problem with the can batteries which is when I say can batteries I'm talking about these six volt spring batteries is that if they were not maintained or especially in the hot and cold and after a couple of years they would tend to, just like all batteries, they would tend to off gas and, and corrosion would set in. And that's why a lot of these early lights you find, a lot of them are, that's the first thing you look at when you, if you're thinking of buying one, you have to open it up, look at the inside. This one happens to be really clean, very rare. They're usually covered with corrosion and, and things like that, but uh, that's because this battery wasn't kept in there. But you would have to have these set up and you would set them up the same way. They were, you know, uh, they were blinking. Big B made a bunch of them. There was all different types. And uh, that was an interesting part. And then after that, they went to uh, road triangles. Now, this is, uh, to this day, this seems to be one of the more popular um, road safety flares or that they call them safety devices. And uh, you see them. They're inexpensive. Uh, they can be a little bit heavy because they, they, uh, the bottom part of the triangle is weighted down with like a lead bar inside so that they don't blow over. Uh, but they do stand about between 18 and 20 inches high and they do give a very good, um, reflective, uh, stance when you, you set them up properly. And this is what you see most truckers have today. Um, the road triangles and that's always good. And again, they're cheap enough to have to throw in the car. But I have something I think is pretty interesting. Let me show you what I have. Now, this is what I carry in my truck. I also carry other things reflectors. I, I used to do a lot of, I worked nights for so many years and I never wanted to be stuck at night. And, you know, with people texting and everything, it's very dangerous, you know, to be anywhere disabled at night. But I have a bunch of different things. Uh, but th I got these Cartmans a while ago. I got them on Amazon. And you could see the collapse, collapsible cones you can see what they look like and what you do is you pull this out like this just like that and it becomes a traffic cone and uh, they're highly reflective you know this is that uh, extremely reflective material here and it's a cone so you set them up and uh Bob's your Next up and last up we have uh, devices that do much better at night uh, one of them is these flares and this is uh, you can see Orion makes these now um, flares do not come without their, you know, issues. Uh, the old flares were discontinued because there was something that would, uh, some kind of, um, byproduct that would go into the water systems and they were saying that it wasn't good for fresh water and it would poison it somewhat. So they came out with a safety type flare. They're good for 15 minutes. Um, the thing is, it's a little tricky. You got to know how to ignite them and it's not hard. But if you've never done it before, it's a little bit. And also, um, one thing is they keep these, the new ones especially, in plastic, sealed plastic bags. Because if you had the old ones laying out, sometimes the cardboard wrapping would uh, absorb moisture, make them a little bit more difficult and tricky to uh, to work with. So, flares now, are... Now, last up, we have uh, very popular now, especially for nighttime use, we have these... Uh, these puck style uh, emergency lights and uh, how these work is uh, this one's actually rechargeable has a nice little recharging system because you can use a regular 110 outlet you can use your car adapter or you could use any laptop or anything that has five volts and then this here will go right onto there because it's uh, magnetic this is a neodymium magnet and you could put that on your car whatever you could throw these out they're supposed to be rated to even be run over you know they're very strong uh, and they have a whole different menu of different type of style lights that you can activate. But let me show you how they charge. Now here we have the uh, indicator that lets you know that it, uh, it is indeed powered up. And you just, like I said, you take it where the magnet is. And these two screws, there's a positive and a negative. But um, and you match up the positive with the positive, the negative with the negative, like this. And you just clip it on like that. And you'll see you'll get a green light. Now that... Uh, that you it charges up in a, in you know no time depending on how much you use it because the batteries aren't too big in there but they do last a while. Let me show you what they look like. Now this does have a menu to go through. A lot of them do, but there's a little switch here. You can see there the power it on. So you just hold that switch down until the uh, the lights come on. And you can see here the uh, first one here that it, it will give you a, a bit of a strobe. Uh, secondly, you can have it go around, which is really nice. Uh, this will give you that emergency type strobe. Uh, as you can see, I'm going through the different menus here of what it has. 
uh, back and forth. And then also you can control the brightness as you see. If you, if I just wanted them all lit below uh, lighting, so it does have a, a lot of uh, different. This, if you just wanted to have facing the back of the vehicle or the front of the vehicle, and you could widen that up, and then it goes into your main. That's off, and then um, so it is. It, it it's very interesting. These things are really good, and they really look nice outside, lit up. Now, if you've ever been helpless on the side of the road, I know that you know a lot of people, especially today, we have the roadside assistance and whatnot, but. You know, there is nothing uh, as as bad as feeling totally helpless, stuck in a road where there was no shoulder or anything. And, you know, you can't sit in your car. You know, that's a death trap. And then, you know, if it's cold out, you're going to be waiting on the shoulder and, and hoping nobody hits you. So it's a good investment to have. Same with that little mini compressor a good investment to have. You know, this these are things you think about when you get older, you know, because you just don't want to be relying on other people. You kind of want to be self-sufficient. Anyway, I thought that might help. Thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great week. This is the beginning. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>